sick with the help and guidance of the our ministry to the sick is now more organized, more efficient, and systematic. They have been doing their best to assist us and to work from where we are so that we could truly function as such. One thing that Spring Rain was able to help us and has been going on until now is really connecting a lot of people, and not only here in the Philippines but also in abroad have given us the, the right mindset, the skill set, and the tool set that we need in order to establish our office and to raise funds for our apostolate in education. It was very chaotic <laughs> before Spring Rain. We were just scrambling and trying to figure things out where Spring Rain came and gave us the technology on how to run it properly. We had departments roles and it was an organized machine where it's just like the business or any entity that it would function on its own even if one person's not there or the president is not there the foundation is constantly moving and functioning for the new PDOs the resources that you have will be maximized because of the system that spring rain will teach you and will share with you the system has helped us how to pull resources how to manage the fund, how also to manage our advocacies, our activities and program, how to sustain it and plans are being done for its continuity. I would like to invite you to engage with Spring Rain and help the people, your community, more with the system. Without the system, it will block succession. If you have the right skillful people without the system, then it cannot sustain long enough. If you have a system without the right people, then you miss the opportunity of maximizing the whole process. There's a lot of donor fatigue that is happening right now. And it's not because they don't want to give. It's about being annoyed by the manner of asking. It's actually the manner of the way we are communicating with the donor. The perennial problem that we have been encountering is the problem of sustainability. Partly because we haven't nourished and nurtured relationships with our different benefactors all these years. That's why I see the great potential that once we are able to connect and to nurture our relationship with our donors and eventually make their donation, make their giving more of a happy experience, then probably things will be better so that it doesn't become a linear type of relationship, but it becomes a mutual kind of relationship. When the donor gives, he is happy. He is happy because he was able to give. And of course, he is happy that he is being regularly updated by the happenings and the updates of the foundation itself. We are able to see more people who are really not only business driven, but deep inside, they want to make their businesses even more meaningful they are finding meaning on giving impact to the lives of others. It ignites more our desire to do mission, to expand our mission. We are very excited to continue doing it and to be more serious about it. It takes a way to really study them and learn about how these donors need to get motivated, get involved, so that the fatigue that is happening will turn into a transformation of partnership, love, generosity, and it will create a very wonderful family in the world of philanthropy.
Good evening, everyone, and also good morning and good afternoon to those joining us from other parts of the world via Facebook Live. Welcome to the 43rd day of Spring Rain Global's 45 Days Lenten Recollection, a Lenten journey of faith in the life of the saints. We are live every day for the next days of this Lenten journey via Zoom and on the Facebook page of Spring Rain Global. To ensure the solemnity of our recollection, may we please request everyone to please Put your microphones on mute as soon as you log in and for the whole duration of our recollection. Let us now begin with our opening song followed by the Spring Ring Global Prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Spring Rain Global Prayer Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be called in this noble endeavor of serving people and organizations through our thrust for a deeper love for humanity and stewardship of our giftedness. 
As we respond to this ministry each day, fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit, that your wisdom may enlighten us, that your strength may remind us to stay focused in our purpose and calling, that your light be our guide at all times, and that your love be in our hearts. We know that the journey may not always be easy, but we firmly believe and hold on to your promise that you will be with us both in our challenges and victories as we bring love and unity to your people in service for others. We continue to pray that as we grow the mission and purpose of our Spring Rain Global family, we may be sustained by your grace, ready to open the path for others so that your blessings and divine providence may completely flow to each and every one of us. May we always stay in your grace now and forever. This we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, welcome to the 43rd day of Spring Rain Global's 45 Days Lenten Recollection, a Lenten journey of faith in the life of the saint. Tonight's reflection is about the journey of faith of Venerable Mother Consuelo Barcelo E. Pages. And we will be guided in our reflection by Sister Niceta Vargas, OSA, the PDO Director of the Augustinian Sisters of Our Lady of Consolation PDO, and an advisory board member of Spring Rain Global. Let us all welcome Sister Niceta. Bayang magigyo, temas ng silangan, adap ng puso sa dibdib mo'y buhay. Lupang hinirang, tuyan ka ng magiting, sa pantulubing, di ka pasisiging, sa dagat at butong, sa simoy at sa langit mong bukaw. May dilag ang buna at awit sa paglayang minamahal. Ang isap ng watawag mo'y tagli, may nanang minimbing. Ang bituin ng araw niya kay Dan, ang may di magdidili. Lupa ng araw ng wal, ating pagsinta, buhay ay langit sa pinuho. Aming ligaya na pag may mga atin, ang mamatay ng dahil sa'yo. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright star through the perilous fight or the rest and past we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets replayed the box for sting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there or oh, say just that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Mari kita rakyat Singapura sama-sama menuju bahagia cita-cita kita yang mulia berjaya Singapura marilah kita bersatu 
Dengan semangat yang baru, semua kita berseru. Majulah Singapura, majulah Singapura. Marilah kita bersatu dengan semangat yang baru. Semua kita berseru, majulah Singapura. Majulah Singapura. Again, welcome to the 43rd day of Spring Rain Global's 45 days Lenten Recollection, a Lenten journey of faith in the life of the saints. Tonight's reflection is about the journey of faith of Venerable Mother Consuelo Barcelo E. Pajes, and we will be guided in our reflection by Sister Niseta Vargas, OSA, PDO Director of the Augustinian Sisters of Our Lady of Consolation, PDO, and an advisory board member of Spring Rain Global. Let us all welcome Sister Niseta. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to all who follow the SRG 45 day Lenten recollection. We are now on the 43rd day of walking with saints, both men and women toward the path of wholeness and holiness. Thank you for the beautiful Lenten exercise. Our dear Father Victor, Dr. Glenda, and the SRG team. Today, I'm going to share with you the life, the heroic virtues, and the Lenten thoughts of Venerable Mother Consuelo Bartolo OSE, the foundress of the Augustinian Sisters of Our Lady of Consolation. Mother Consuelo was born on July 24, 1857, in Saria, Barcelona, Spain, the youngest among the five children of Salvador, Barcelo, and Maria Pages. She was baptized two days later as Joaquina Mercedes. That is the house where she was born, and that is the parish church of St. Vincent of Zaria, where she was baptized. The family belonged to a middle class, very religious and closely knit one. Her other siblings were Salvador, single, Dom Mawakina, a Cistercian nun who died young, Mother Rita, Inés, the foundress of the Augustinian Sisters of Our Lady of Consolation, together with Mother Consuelo, and Joaquin, a married and family man. The young Joaquina, or fondly called Kimeta, studied as an interna at the Colegio de las Esclavas del Sagrado Corazón de Jesús in Barcelona for 14 years. That is her school. She was drawn to music, having been gifted with a singing voice. A gregarious person, she took time to comfort the sick and help the poor, whether in her own hometown or in the city. She marveled constantly at flowers and plants as part of God's creation. She was in tune with nature and with God as a young person. After finishing her studies, she felt a calling to the contemplative way of life, like her elder sister, Doma Joaquina. She then entered the Monasterio de las Comendadoras de San Juan de Jerusalén in Barcelona. That was the convent where she stayed. She, however, developed a chronic abscess in her knee, which made her lame. 
she had to leave the convent to recuperate at home. And when the abscess healed, she returned to the monastery. But the abscess recurred and she had to leave the convent for good. In 1883, when she was 25 years old, another opportunity to serve God came unexpectedly. On New Year's Day of 1883, the representative of the Augustinian province of the Most Holy Name of Jesus in the Philippines formally invited the Sisters of the Beaterio Mantelatas de San Agustin in Barcelona to work at the Asilo de Nuestra de la Consolación in Mandaluyong. They were to take care of Filipino girls who were orphaned in the wake of the cholera epidemic of 1882 in Manila. The Beatas volunteered, including Mother Rita Bartholo, Joaquina's sister. Joaquina, upon hearing of the mission, also volunteered for it. Thus, she entered the Beaterio as a postulant early in 1883. Mother Rita, who was 40 years old then, joined the first group of four Beatas who left Barcelona for Manila on March 1, 1883. The second group of three sisters sailed on September 1, 1883. They, they sailed through the galleon boat, which included the postulant Joaquina. They arrived in Manila on October 5, 1883. During the voyage, Joaquina endured a severe seasickness. In Manila, the Spanish sisters experienced culture shock in adjusting to the tropical weather in their black habit and the food, which consisted of rice instead of bread. On November 21, 1883, seven weeks after her arrival, Mother Consuelo received the Augustinian habit as a novice at the chapel of the orphanage in Mandaluyong. She was given the name Sor Maria de la Consolación and was called Sor Consuelo. Sorita, her older sister, observed that the sickly Sor Consuelo has always been in perfect health and said, it is evident that our Lord has kept her to take care of the poor orphans of the Philippines. The sisters, Sor Rita and Sor Consuelo, devoted their energy, time, and resources at the service of God in the person of the orphans placed under their care. The asilo, took in a growing number of orphan girls from 50 in 1883 to 200 at the time of the Philippine-Spanish Revolution in 1896. Ten months after her investiture as a novice, Sor Consuelo found herself in a controversy. Mother Antonia, the superior, questioned the authority of the beginning community to initiate the procedure of profession of vows. The Archbishop of Manila also threatened to withhold the approval on the grounds that the religious house had been established without license from the archdiocese. This delayed the religious profession of Sor Consuelo. 
The Augustinians, nevertheless, decided to go through the historic event in a simple ceremony before the statue of St. Joseph in the chapel of the Asilo on December 26, 1884. Sor Consuelo, by the way, was the first peninsular woman, that is, a lady born in Spain, to be clothed and to profess as a beata in the Philippines. In 1886, Sir Consuelo, with another sister, was assigned to the shrine of Our Lady of Kaisasay in Taal, Batangas, to set up a school for girls. But in less than a year, they had to return to the Asilo de Mandaluyong because Mother Rita was left there alone to take care of the orphans. The Spanish sisters had to go back to Spain because of poor health and inability to adjust to their situation. By the middle of 1887 then, from the original seven volunteers from Barcelona, only Mother Rita and Mother Consuelo remained steadfast in their mission in the Philippines. They had taken their mission so well that despite stress and overwork, only the two of them were not brought down by serious illness. The Asilo de Mandaluyong started accepting native vocations as early as 1885. This would become the pioneer Filipino sisters of the present Augustinian Sisters of Our Lady of Consolation. Mother Consuelo served as their mistress of novices. The first 10 Filipino sisters professed in 1890. Among them was Sor Teresa de Jesus Andrada, who would become their leader when the Spanish sisters were sent home to Spain in 1898 by the Augustinian friars because of the Philippine Spanish Revolution. Four of the Filipino sisters had grown up or studied in the asilo. Some earned a teacher's diploma from the College of the Daughters of Charity. Eleven more Filipino women entered and professed between 1891 and 1897. Later, the orphanage was raised into a colegio asilo. In 1896, at the first stage of the Philippine Spanish Revolution, there was no untoward event that happened in the orphanage or it, its nearby premises. The Agustinas Misioneras in Madrid sent two beatas to augment the workers in the Colegio Asilo in Mandaluyong, who arrived on October 6, 1896. And due to the drastic turn of events that happened, they had to go back to Spain. They were the last Augustinas Misioneras to serve in the Philippines. On October 22, 1897, Mother Consuelo was appointed the superior of the asilo, and Mother Rita replaced her as the mistress of novices. The second phase of the revolution flared up in 1898, followed by the Filipino-American War. This time, Mother Consuelo and Mother Rita, together with almost 200 wards, went through a harrowing experience. The asilo was occupied by the revolutionaries so that it was caught in the crossfire between warring parties. Their strong faith was enough to help them get through this unnerving crisis. Mata Consuelo, the superior of the asilo, had to deal directly with the military and make instant decisions under a hall of bullets. To save their lives, the sisters and the children had to abandon their embattled abode. On June 11, 1898, they fled on foot at dusk in a very long procession and they crossed the Pasig River toward the city of Manila, which was still under the Spaniards. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? 
Dapat magsilayo na tayo dito. Come on, children. Let's continue walking. Dapat makarating tayo sa Guadalupe. Sister, dapat magtahinga muna tayo dito. Wag, sister. Dapat tayo magpatuloy. Sir, may dugang baka. May sugat. this perilous journey, it seemed that the angels spread their wings upon them to protect them from danger. The hapless refugees ended up in the Augustinian convent in Guadalupe in Makati, which had been taken over by the Filipino troops. The Filipino soldiers showed them adequate kindness and respect as they witnessed the Beata's attitude and conduct toward the orphans in their care. Adios, Filipinas. When the Americans imposed their rule on the islands on August 13, 1898, the Spanish religious orders panicked. The Augustinian provincial dissolved the Augustinian sisters' community as well as their college and orphanage on August 27, a day before the feast of St. Augustine and three days before the Solemnity of Our Lady of Consolation. He ordered the Spanish Beatas to return to Barcelona and the Filipino sisters to their respective homes. Mother Rita and Mother Consuelo pleaded to be allowed to remain with their Filipino sisters and continue with the mission they had faithfully fulfilled for 16 years. Bound by strict obedience, however, they left Manila for Spain on March 13, 1899. This is probably the most misunderstood period in the life of Mother Consuelo. She had to face crisis upon crisis, the trauma of the Philippine Revolution, the Filipino-American War, her midlife crisis, the culture shock in reverse in Barcelona. When she came to the Philippines, she had culture shock in a new country and culture. But when she returned back to her own country, she had culture shock as well. And the readjustment to a different Biaterio, because she did not belong to this Biaterio, and the desire to return to the Philippines this was her dark night of the soul. With God's unfailing assistance, she carried her crosses with patience and perseverance. In the Philippines, however, the Filipino Beatas resolved to stay together and struggle to preserve their community, even without the support of the Augustinian authorities. For 11 months, the Daughters of Charity gave them refuge at the Asilo de Looban in Paco. With hope in their hearts, they awaited the return of Mother Rita and Mother Consuelo. In the picture, you have Mother Maria Ocariz, the Mother Superior of the Sisters of Charity, who gave them refuge and support. While in Spain, Mother Consuelo and Mother Rita actively supported the Filipino sisters' efforts to affiliate with the Beaterio of Barcelona as the mother house. The Beaterio, however, declined the petition due to lack of precedence. The Filipino Beatas also tried to associate themselves with the Augustinian missionary sisters in Madrid, but they were turned down by the superior who had served in the Philippines earlier. Mother Rita worked for the aggregation of the Augustinian Tertiarias de las Islas Filipinas to the Augustinian order. And Mother Consuelo eventually in Spain adapted 
to the Beaterio of Barcelona. In recognition of her personal qualities, as well as administrative ability, she was elected as the superior in February of 1903. On December 2, 1903, on the feast of St. Francis Xavier, the patron of the missions, she applied to join her blood sister, Mother Rita, to go back to the Philippines. Just when the two Bartholo sisters were firming up their joint plans to return to the Philippines, on New Year 1904, Mother Rita, in an effort to avoid falling off a chair, suffered a slipped disc in the spinal column. Mother Consuelo nursed her together with the infirmarians. After five months of excruciating pain, Mother Rita died on May 14, 1904. She could not return to the Philippines. The death of Mother Rita further strengthened Mother Consuelo's resolve to serve the church in the Philippines and to be with the fledgling community of Filipina sisters there. On June 18, 1904, Mother Consuelo left Barcelona for good and never to return again to her country and arrived Manila on the last week of July, 1904. When she arrived in the Philippines, Mother Consuelo admired what had become of the Filipino sisters and of the orphanage. The Filipino sisters refounded their community. In 1899, they reestablished the Colegio Asilo de Huérfanas de Nuestra Señora de la Consolación. They modernized the name to Colegio de la Consolación in 1901, the first private school to teach English in the Philippines. And the Filipino sisters received the official aggregation to the Augustinian order on May 31, 1902. They held their first chapter in 1903 and elected Mother Maria del Sagrado Corazon as the first Filipino prioress. In Manila, Mother Consuelo was appointed a superior of the new novitiate house of St. Joseph in Santa Ana, Manila in September of 1904. In 1906, she was elected as prioress of the Sisters of Colegio de la Consolación Manila until 1915, that is, for nine years. There you have the picture of the old La Consolación College, which in Spanish was Colegio de la Consolación. In 1915, she was elected Superior General, serving for four terms, a total of 25 years until her death on August 4, 1940. On July 31, 1940, she had two strong heart attacks. On the way to the hospital, she regained consciousness and began to recite the De Profundis. Out of the depths, I have cried to you, O Lord. And while at the state of semi-consciousness, she was given Holy Communion. She raised herself up and prayed in a loud voice, the Confitior Dei, I confess to Almighty God. When she became restless and perturbed, she whispered Psalm 23. When Most Reverend Michael Doherty, Archbishop of Manila, visited her, she was already unconscious. Upon seeing the sisters weeping, he remarked, why do you weep? You should be glad to have in heaven a saint to intercede for you. If Sor Consuelo is not a saint, then there is no saint in heaven. 
On August 4, 1940, Mother Consuelo died. Hundreds of girls, both young and grown-ups, the orphans especially, paid tribute of love and gratitude to her. So how was Mother Consuelo as an Augustinian religious leader? Mother Consuelo manifested concretely her love for God in her love for neighbors. First, she deeply loved and cared for the sisters in community in her day-to-day -day life by teaching and admonishing them to live a life of humility obedience, and charity. She shared with them her own prayer life through her letters. There are 800 of them, which inspired them to devote to the Holy Family, to emulate the teachings of St. Augustine, and facilitated unity and harmony in the congregation. She persistently encouraged them to desire to belong only to God. She provided the spiritual formation of the sisters, witnessing before them the fidelity to the holy rule of St. Augustine and the constitutions of the congregation. She had in her heart the well-being of the sisters. Second, she offered kindness to her benefactors by greeting them on all occasions. She shared good books to the Augustinian friars in San Agustin. She also requested her family in Spain to house her displaced friends in the Philippines. She interceded for persons with problems to be accommodated in religious houses. She recommended persons who needed employment to business establishments. Third, she loved her family devotedly. She showed this by writing them, offering prayers for them, wishing them God's blessings and good health. She sent them religious articles, English magazines for them to practice English. She communicated with them frequently, especially to her brothers who sent her varieties of trees and plants, which she shared to the Department of Agriculture. We remember that as a young person, she loved nature. She loved trees and plants and flowers. And she brought it with her here in our country in the Philippines where she was assigned, she planted so many plants and trees. And as a superior general, how was she? She governed the Institute uprightly and courageously. She consulted with her council and dialogued with them as she accepted their advices. She also showed required reverence and submission to her superiors, both ecclesiastical and civil authorities. She worked for clarity in agreements or contracts on working relationships with bishops and priests regarding the congregation's apostolate. She promoted vocations to the religious life by personally responding to the candidates' inquiries. She maintained personal contact with parents of the postulants and the novices. She assumed close personal responsibility over the spiritual well-being of the Institute as well as its material welfare. She had to hurdle financial difficulties. At one point, she had to borrow 80,000 pesos to be able to buy a piece of land, which is now the Consolation College, Mendiola, Manila. But she put her trust in the divine providence, which strengthened her to resolve them, and especially to pay all her debts. During her leadership term, she established eight schools to show her love and concern for the youth of the land, and five of which are managed now by our sisters, namely Colegio del Buen Consejo in Pasig, 
founded 1909. La Consolation College Bacolod founded 1919. La Consolation University Philippines 1937. And La Consolation College Kalaohan and La Consolation College Baao in 1940, months before she died. The document Decree on Virtues from Rome summarized her heroic virtues, foremost of which was love of God and neighbor, charity. I quote, her love for God and for the neighbor was absolute, sincere, without any reservation, inspired by a deep desire for perfection, combined with a deep feeling of gratitude. Her thirst for God, her deep sense of the international community, and her great respect for the people were evident and were based on her love and her spirit of service, especially toward the sisters whom she guided with a benevolent authority. Her whole life was nothing more than a humble hymn to charity. On June 18, 2002, the congregation started the formal process for the beatification of Mother Consuelo, the formal opening of the cause in the Archdiocese of Manila. On September 6, 2003, the closing process in the Archdiocese took place at San Agustin Church, Manila. On December 9, 2005, the postulator general in Rome received from the Congregation for Causes of Saints the document for the affirmative voice for the decree of validity at the diocesan level for the process of beatification. In December 20, 2012, the Holy Father Pope Benedict XVI elevated the cause of the servant of God, Mother Consuelo, to venerable. Now she is Venerable Mother Consuelo Barstelo. In this Holy Week, I would like to share with you some Lenten reflections of Venerable Mother Consuelo. 
In these days of the Holy Week, let us remember the excesses of the divine love, not only to save us, but also to show us the greatness of His love and win our hearts and wills. And because He has loved us from eternity, and He wants that our hearts will only be for Him for all time. From her letter of 1913. God grant that we will not forget what Jesus did and how he suffered for love of each of us. May God grant that we persist with the heart to return love for love. This is a very favorite expression of Mother Consuelo, to return love for love. It is true that every moment and everywhere we see ourselves surrounded by the ardent love which Jesus professes for us and which he had from eternity, which our sins have not diminished until the present. His major desire is to love us for all eternity. Love is repaid by love. We can love him, we should love him, because he commanded us to. Let us love him much, very much. Let us humbly and with great confidence, love always increasing love. From her letter, 1925. And you can really feel how much she is so in love with God. And that love radiates to other people. On the unity of the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus, Mother Consuelo says, Let us be aware, my dear sisters, and be very conscious that as our good Lord Jesus was crucified and died ignominiously, so also he rose and ascended into heaven, and from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. From her letter, 1913. We share in the cross and resurrection of Jesus. She says, We will also suffer in this life and die and be judged and later rise and receive a reward, and this for all time, for all time. Let us revive the triumphant resurrection of our divine model to overcome the difficulties that we will experience in the practice of mortification and religious observance. From her letter of 1913. And just before she died, in 1940, she wrote, Let us listen to Jesus speaking. Believe me, I am in love with you. And I do not know what else to do to entice you to give yourself up to me. Completely naked from all other earthly affections as I did shed for you all earthly comfort. Now I'd like to share with you my reflections on Venerable Mother Consuelo's life. And there are four of them. First is, God blessed Mother Consuelo with a happy and gregarious personality, her love for music and nature, as well as a religious spirit of love for God and His mission. Mother Consuelo gave back to God what she had received from Him.
Second, Madre Consuelo pursued her call to the religious way of life despite initial rejection and obstacles to serve the God, God's poor, especially the orphan children of the Philippines. Third, she carried her crosses with strength and obedience to do the will of God in her life. She did not give up in any way. And last but not the least, she loved God ardently through her love for her sister's well-being, for her family, for the underprivileged, especially the orphans, children, and youth, and those with burdens in life, both in the material and spiritual spheres. She loved the church by responding proper authorities and being obedient to them. i 
you have that may also be present in regard to the love of God and the love of neighbor. So the first question is, do you recognize the blessings that God gave you in your talents and gifts, both physical and spiritual, and in the work and mission you do? How do you develop and use God's gifts so as to offer them back as your gift to God in return? Second, at your particular stage in life, what is your attitude to experiences of rejection, trials, and difficulties? that you encounter in your journey? Are you able to see God's work and will in your life in these moments? How do you endure your crosses in life? And third, if you are a parent or a leader in a community or at work, how do you express your love for others in your day-to-day -day life? Do you also strive to be a spiritual leader in your family or community? How?
our closing prayer, may I invite you to pray together with me the prayer for the beatification of Mother Consuelo. God of love and compassion, you endowed Mother Consuelo with great love and zeal for your honor and glory. We commend to you her life and example of love of God and neighbor. With faith and trust in your gracious providence, we pray for her beatification, so that she may continue to inspire us in seeking your will and living a holy life. God of mercy, we also humbly present to you our need, united with a confirmation the holiness of life of Mother Consuelo. Please mention your intention, especially for those who are sick. In gratitude for your boundless blessings, we praise and thank you, our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, and good night, everyone. Thank you, Sister Neseta, for guiding us in our reflection tonight. The, light of, the life of Mother Consuelo is a reflection of passion and devotion. Her great love for God and her trust in His providence enabled her to overcome the challenges in her journey, from being a nun to establishing La Consolacion. We too have a lot of challenges to face in our lives. May we be inspired by Mother Consuelo's trust in God as we go through our sufferings and carry our crosses with an entrusting heart and a hopeful spirit. And just like how Mother Consuelo exemplified the life of love and service to others, may we also strive to live the same path. As we're also reminded tonight that we are blessed with so many blessings and talents from God, may we use those talents to lead and serve others as our sign of gratitude to God for all the blessings that He has bestowed upon us. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. To continue our spiritual growth this Lent and beyond, a group chat was created for all the participants of Spring Green Global's 45 Days Lent Recollection. Inclusion and participation in the group chat will be voluntary. Before we move on to the closing part of our recollection for tonight, may we please request everybody to please turn on their cameras for our group picture. And later on your cameras po. Okay, for our first page. One, two, three. Ready po. One, two, three. Smile. Next page po. One, two, three. Smile. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Please join us again tomorrow, 8 o'clock p.m. Philippine time, here at Zoom or live via the Facebook page of Spring Rain Global for the 44th day of Spring Rain Global's 45 days Lenten Recollection.
Tomorrow's topic is a Lenten journey of faith in the life of St. Padre Pio. And we will be guided by in our reflection by Dr. Glenda Miro Antonio, Chairman of uh, Founder, President, and CEO of Spring Ring Global, and the Founder and President of Spring Ring Global Foundation. We also invite you to join us tomorrow for the Spring Ring Global's 2023 online visita iglesia. This will be accompanied by reflections on the Stations of the Cross. We hope that you will invite your family and friends, and together, let us nurture our faith, love, and devotion to the Lord. As we play our closing song, we bid goodbye to everybody watching from the Philippines and good day to all those watching from other parts of the world. Thank you. See you tomorrow and may God bless us all.